Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. What we're going to be looking at now is some of the books and some of the plays that you're going to be studying. So we're starting off with A Christmas Carol because it's a hugely popular one or for study all around the world and it is in of itself a great book. No doubt about that. Um, if you want to get a copy of it, you can get it here from the Gutenberg website and you can just um, read through as you go on, an, on another screen or half the screen and listen to this over it. It's completely up to you. So basically what I'm going to try and attempt to do is just go through and analyze some of the things that you may have picked up or reinforce some of the things that you may have picked up in lessons and hopefully add other things remember anything I say is just an opinion um, some of the opinions that obviously I've taught over the years some of them you might agree with some of them you disagree with please 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 don't waste your time saying hey I disagree because obviously it's completely up to you to disagree but hopefully for some other people it might be uncovering something or even just looking at something from a different point of view will just get you thinking about something else as well so we start off here and Charles Dickens has put in a preface I have endeavoured in this ghostly little book to raise the ghost of an idea which shall not put my readers out of humour with themselves with each other with the season or with me may haunt their houses pleasantly and no one wish to lay it and in there he kind of sets out his kind of manifesto or how, what he wants the book to do he wants to try and challenge the readers with an idea that he wants to think about and he wants it to be something that lasts with them and he doesn't want it to be something that goes away but he knows it's going to be quite a challenge for them so he doesn't want it to put them in a bad mood with themselves with each other with the season or with me so he knows that what he's going to say is actually quite interesting and really one of the things that you can look at for this is remember he's writing to an audience 160 years ago um that was a lot more religious so basically as you you know from uh, when we meet marley now uh, in the first stave the place where marley's come from is obviously alluding to being hell and the idea being that those who kind of put wealth up of helping others will be the people that go to hell and obviously for some people at the time that would have been very very offensive now if we tell people to go to hell it probably wouldn't mean anything but obviously in those days people probably wouldn't really have taken such a serious um, slight against them very well so he kind of puts that up for the first thing to try and tell them the idea and also to to show that he knows the importance of what he's saying and probably most importantly to kind of set up this friendly tone which is a tone that he comes through without what he starts starts um, a lot with and then it kind of dwindles a little in the book as we shall see so we start then with Marley's ghost and to begin with Marley was dead and that's really interesting he starts off there Marley was dead to begin with obviously it's quite a striking opening to, to, to start with Marley was dead but it also kind of tells us what's to come it's to begin with and so here we're going to have Marley's ghost come to us because obviously now we're beginning but then something's going to change and then all the kind of kind of proof and evidence just to kind of set up that he definitely was dead and also kind of tell us something about the reputation of Scrooge right here as uh, basically anything that Scrooge put his name to then obviously you could really trust that document not in terms of how um, honest or reliable Scrooge was it's just that Scrooge didn't put his name to anything unless it was 100% true and we'll see why this was the case and maybe it was indicating as well that Scrooge is very much a man of fact which he's kind of alluded to when he starts seeing things and he tries not to believe it okay so old Marley was as dead as Dornell again the repetition stresses that and then we have uh, the simile dead as a Dornell and then we have have Dickens sidetracking into um, the ideas behind this simile and what it could mean and why it was actually used um, and then he talks to the reader in the first person saying you will therefore permit me now obviously again the reason he does this is twofold first of all to take that kind of side by side tone someone next to you tone and also to talk to address the reader in the second person you know directly it's quite rare in novels for that to happen but obviously Dickens here is really trying to strike a message with the reader and uh, several times throughout the book as we'll see he kind of takes that tone takes that position almost like he's your conscience talking to you and then we'll develop that further Scrooge knew he was dead a question mark and obviously that's interesting because it sets us up to know that this is going to change um, and then it kind of talks about how close they were okay and that's really important to know that in setting up how important Marley's going to be to Scrooge perhaps it's only someone who was this close that could actually affect Scrooge or have an effect on Scrooge and so we have to know that this person is very very close to Scrooge and we also get the idea first of all about the loneliness or the idea of feel of loneliness is coming through as we have the word soul repeated again and again and again not necessarily directly referencing Scrooge as his own characteristic here but it does start us off thinking about him being on his own now 
and obviously just stressing kind of the the idea subconsciously to us about people being alone which is what scrooge is and even scrooge was not definitely cut up uh, sorry cut up about it because he was an excellent man of business etc etc and here one of the key aspects of the funeral again it's quite humorous is that um the actual funeral itself, obviously, when the person closest to him was supposed to be probably worried or upset or, you know, thinking about life, what we know that Scrooge actually managed to do is they actually struck up a bargain about the cost of the funeral. So um, now here we go into again, um, just a little more talk about Marley being dead. Obviously, we reference the same stuff from earlier. And we've got this little sidetrack into um, Hamlet and Hamlet's father and all you really need to know for that is that um, in Hamlet Hamlet sees his father and kind of gives him an omen and a warning um, about some stuff and uh, so obviously there's a reference there to literature and kind of Dickens has just kind of touched upon that very very lightly here just again to kind of give us an indication that we're going to meet someone ghostly uh, and obviously if you wanted any more indication of it it's called Marley's Ghost so again we move on then and we find out a little bit more about Scrooge now Scrooge Scrooge never point, point uh, excuse me, pointed out old painted out, sorry, old Marley's name, and that gives us an idea about the kind of person that he is. Um, this was his partner for seven years, uh, but the reason that he hasn't changed it isn't because he's cut up or worried about it. The reason he hasn't changed it is because he can't be bothered or because it might cost him something. So it just stands there. He doesn't really care. He's not one for change. That's the important thing to take from it. So even though the, the, the firm is still known as Scrooge and Marley, when people come in, we're told that sometimes he'll answer as Scrooge and sometimes he'll answer as Marley, and that's really important because it shows that he has a focus different than kind of a, a relationship with people he's like oh, he's not, oh, no I'm Scrooge I'm pleased to meet you he doesn't really care all he wants is people's business and um, it kind of just gives us an indication of that uh, sorry of how, how business minded he is and again his lack of change moving on then we 